Mamba is the Morgan Hypercoaster at Worlds of Fun. This is the park's tallest, fastest, and longest coaster. Mamba looks imposing, but for years, it delivered an underwhelming ride experience. I have updated a few of my older reviews, mainly because they were technically inadequate, but I need to update Mamba's review for an entirely different reason. It's because the ride experience radically changed. My old review reflected the ride experience through the 2021 season. Before the 2022 season, the mid-course trim was essentially turned off. This transformed Mamba from one of the worst hyper coasters into a genuinely awesome one, and I'll explain why in this review. Morgan Manufacturing only built eight different roller coasters from the ground up, but a majority of their portfolio consisted of mega coasters. Three of these were added to Cedar Fair Parks. First was Wild Thing at Valley Fair in 1996. Second was Steel Force at Dorney Park in 1997. Third was Mamba at Worlds of Fun in 1998. All three of these coasters have very similar stats and setups. They are placed in the boundaries of the park. They then have out and back layouts. The outward leg has some big hills. The turnaround section has some swooping turns and fantastic near misses with supports. Then there's a mid-course break run followed by a return run with a series of bunny hills. How hard that mid-course hits can make or break the experience. Wild Thing is the harshest trim of all. It saps the train of almost all its speed. I've seen it bring the train to a near full stop in the past so you only get a smidge of airtime at best on the return run. Steel Force has consistently run the best of the trio. While the mid-course trim will take away some speed, the return run still offers nice floater airtime the whole way back. Mamba has always been a bit of a wild card. The trim wasn't too harsh in 2018. That year, I got some floater airtime on the return run. It wasn't as good as Steel Force, but was far better than Wild Thing. 2020 was an entirely different story. The train was slowed severely, essentially neutering the return run. That is the version that my old review reflected. In 2022, Mamba got an all-new control system. This had two changes to the ride experience. First, the lift hill was sped up. It's marginally faster for most of the ascent, but it also doesn't cut out over the apex like it used to, so you'll get a little extra speed into the first drop. Second, more notably, the trim in the mid-course brake run was dialed way back. It barely touches the train at all now. This turns the return run, which was previously the weakest part of the ride, into the best part by far. It makes a dramatic difference. One con with this new control system is that Mamba could only run one train for the start of the 2022 season. To combat crowds, the park used a timed entry boarding pass system on weekends and holidays. Thankfully, Multi-train operations returned later that year. Mamba has fantastic capacity. I believe the park owns three trains, but they typically run two. This is what you see in the other two Cedar Fair Morgan Hypers more often than not, and that's fine for the crowds that Worlds of Fun typically sees. The trains are very long. Each holds up to 36 guests. There are six cars, each with three rows of two. Then the crew checks the restraints at a solid clip to minimize stacking. As a result, I have never personally encountered much of a wait for this coaster, and quite a few of my visits have been on summer weekends no less. Typically, I just breeze right on through the coaster's sizable queue line. Most rows are typically walk-ons, but you may need to wait a few extra cycles for the very front row. I think the front and back cars are the best places to experience Mamba. I split my rides fairly evenly between them now. The back has the slightly better first half, but the return run has slightly better airtime in that front car. Now I have heard this coaster can get sizable weights during the park's highly popular Halloween Haunt event though. I haven't personally visited this. If you are visiting on a busy day and you want to maximize your rides on Mamba, it is included with the park's fast lane skip the line pass. That will dump you right into the station, allowing you to bypass the outdoor switchbacks. Alternatively, you could rope drop Mamba since it is a bit further back than several of the park's other coasters. Mamba is located in the Africa section of the park. It has its own dedicated plaza. I like the snake-themed entry sign, and the scaly trains look cool, but there's no other theming. This is a coaster that lets its elements do the talking. The giant red camelbacks look amazing on the park's skyline. You can see the largest hills from anywhere within the park. Then you can also see Mamba from the roadways around the park, 
It's a great form of advertising for World of Fun. Once seated, you'll encounter similar Morgan trains to the other hypers. They're really bulky. And then you'll have similar restraints to the others. You have a seatbelt across your lap and U-shaped lap bars. And I love the latter. Their lowest position is shockingly high. It rests a few inches above my lap. This means that most riders will have plenty of room to experience airtime. And by golly, is there a ton of airtime now. Once dispatched, you have a small dip out of the station, and then you turn left. You then ascend the 205 foot, or 62 meter tall lift hill. It's a fairly slow lift even when it's sped up a bit, but you'll get a great view of the park to your right. Once at the top, you experience the wonky drops Morgan is known for. It has an awkwardly large crest at the start. Once you clear that and hit the max angle descent, those in back will get good sustained floater airtime. It's just delayed a second or two. Mamba then has a colossal camelback. This thing is a whopping 18 stories tall. I'm surprised the train has as much speed as it does over it. As a result, everyone gets several seconds of nice floater air time, but I like it best in the back on the big drop. It feels like a second first drop. Then you jump upwards. It's basically half a camelback, so those up front get some more floater air time. Then you have an interesting turnaround element. It starts with a big sweeping drop to the right. This directly leads to a wide, ground-hugging helix. You get some good G's here, and I start to gray out on a few rides. And you also have some terrifying head choppers of supports towards the end of it. The clearance envelope is scary tight. This leads to a speed hill of sorts, but it really feels more like a section of straight track, just with a kink at the top. This delivers a quick and okay pop of airtime. You then twist left and rise into the mid-course brake run. This turn is underbanked, so it gives some laterals at the start. Then you also get some air time as you level into the brake run. It's good floater up front and weak float in the rear rows. As of this recording, you will then breeze right on through the mid-course. And I really hope Mamba runs this way for the rest of its life. It makes a huge difference. You then careen over a sizable drop into the second half. You have so much speed that even those up front will get some weak floater airtime, but it's best in the back by far, as you get very strong and sustained floater airtime. Mamba then has four consecutive bunny hills. Each delivers oodles of sustained negative Gs. It's extremely strong floater in the back, but it's borderline weak ejector in the front car. One auto mission compared to the other Cedar Fair hypers is that there's no tunnel on the return run. After those four bunny hills, Mamba then has a small double up. It's a bit janky. The tracking is smooth, but you don't have much time to return to your seat in between humps. So you get two abrupt spurts of floater airtime. It almost feels like you're pogoed even higher into the second one. You then have an elongated S bend around the plaza, and you can really feel the speed increase here with the trims off. Then you have a small jump up into the final brake run. With all the added speed, you get a nice pop of airtime up front and you'll still get a weak pop even in the rear rows. You then come to a very loud stop. You then round a corner, pass through another brake run, and re-enter the station, ending the 5,600 foot or 1,700 meter long coaster. Needless to say, the pacing is far stronger with the adjusted mid-course. You get a brief moment to catch your breath going through the brake run, but all the other elements deliver. Then Mamba has never had an issue with smoothness, this coaster tracks extremely well, just like the other Morgan Hypers. So, what would I rate the current version of Mamba? I would give it a 9 out of 10. The programming adjustments significantly improved the experience. Mamba rocketed up my personal ranks, improving over 200 spots. Every hill now delivers great floater airtime, and I love how the negative Gs only get stronger as the ride progresses. That finale is relentless. This is an airtime machine, which is exactly what I want from a hyper coaster. And those minimalistic Morgan restraints elevate the experience even higher. It feels so weird to have this much room on a coaster this scale. These changes now make it the best coaster in the park, and it's the main reason I'd want to come back to this park in the future. So those are my thoughts on Mamba Worlds of Fun. Have you ridden this coaster since they dialed back the mid-course trim? Let me know if the ride experience improved dramatically for you as well down in the comments. If you enjoyed this updated review, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you consider subscribing.
because it'd be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.